Well, hello everyone. It is April and today I'm going to be sharing with you five historical fiction books that I have absolutely loved. None of them are World War II. That can be a little overdone. You know, I think a lot of people need uh, historical fiction suggestions that don't have to do with that very oversaturated market. So let's get into it. creeping closer to 15,000 subscribers on this channel. And I am doing a $150 Amazon gift card giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video and like this video. Stick around until the end of this video and I'm going to get into more detail about the giveaway itself and how you can win. So I do have to tell you, I am going to be recommending five historical fiction books that blew my mind, that I absolutely loved. And I'm partnered up with Angie from Science Mama for this video. Over on her channel, she's also going to be recommending five historical fiction books. If you have not subscribed to Angie yet, you are in for a real treat. Like when I think of historical fiction, I think of Angie. She is lovely. She reads a ton of historical fiction. She also is really into homeschooling. So she's got obviously book reviews and bookish content over on her channel as well as uh, homeschooling content. So definitely go and check out her channel. Shall we dive into the books that I'm going to recommend? The first book that I want to recommend to you is Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. This is a beautifully written historical fiction novel that actually blends literary fiction with historical fiction. So Burial Rites takes place in 1828 in Iceland. We follow a woman named Agnes in Iceland. Now she has been charged with the murder of two men and so she is patiently or impatiently awaiting her death. She will be put to death. But Iceland no longer has a guillotine and so they have to have it shipped in. And in the meantime, she is working with a family and living with a family and it's about their dynamics. I think this is based on a true story. I could be lying about that. But it follows the last person being put to death in Iceland. So good. The Light Between Oceans takes place in 1926. And we follow these two people who are a couple living in Australia. And specifically, they live on Janus Rock because they are lighthouse keepers. And so they keep the lighthouse going, of course, that is their job. And they have been trying to have a baby for a long time and have been struggling in a major way. Our main character, Isabel, has had multiple miscarriages as well as stillbirths. It is devastating to read and really realistic as someone who's had a miscarriage. The grief associated with it, I felt known really in this book. And one day in this book, a boat comes ashore and inside the boat is a dead man and a living and breathing baby. And they take the baby and raise her as their own. And there's a lot of consequences to that. I won't say any more because I don't want to give anything away, but you must read this book. It is brilliant. The next book I gush about in my February wrap up. This is The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. This man can do no wrong. He won the Pulitzer Prize for this book and it takes place in the antebellum South and we follow an ensla enslaved black woman named Cora. Now Cora's mother has escaped and left her behind and she's completely devastated by that. She's trying to make her way in the world anyhow and another enslaved person, a man, comes up to her and says, I want to escape and I want to go with you. And she agrees and it is about them trying to escape slavery. Now, really interestingly in this book, Colson Whitehead has the Underground Railroad as an actual Underground Railroad. So he kind of reimagines that and really is his take on how history and the way that people view history and the history of the Underground Railroad can be really glorified and he kind of takes that down a few notches. 
I thought this was ingenious. It is also very hard to read at times. You get really, really hooked on certain characters and not all the characters live. So it can be devastating, but really good. Next up is a booktube darling. This is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This takes place in the 1950s. We're in Hollywood and we're following Evelyn Hugo rise to fame. She is an actress and she claws her way up the ladder to become a really mega huge star. Now we follow her as an older woman meeting with a specific reporter. She has chosen a reporter to tell her life story. In the meantime, throughout her life, she's been very, very secretive, reserved, and has held her history and her life really close to her. And she's only going to tell this one uh, reporter about her life and it follows the story of her life and I loved it. She's not always the most likable character, but considering that she was a woman in Hollywood in the 1950s, uh, you can see why she needs to be as ruthless at times as she needs to be. Uh, it was good. I really, really enjoyed The Seven Husbands, Evelyn Hugo. Last but not least is Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. I really enjoyed this book as well. This takes place in the 1930s, I believe. And yeah, it's Memphis, 1939. And we follow a group of very poor children living in this area. And their mother is about to give birth to twins, I believe. And so her parents leave to go and deliver the babies. And in the meantime, they're at home and then are snatched. They are kidnapped and brought to an orphanage. And it is a very nasty orphanage called the uh, Tennessee Children's Home Society. And it's run by a nasty woman named Georgia Tan, who has stolen children and essentially told very wealthy people who want children that these are all orphans, even though they're not. And unfortunately, this is based on a true story. So this is one of those books where you go back and forwards in time and they're in the present day. You meet someone who's trying to find out the history and secrets of the past. I really enjoyed this book. Definitely not to be missed. So those are all of the historical fiction books I wanted to share with you today. None of them are World War II. I hope you'll go over to Angie's channel and check out her five suggestions. I'm sure she's got some really good ones over there and subscribe to her channel because she's fabulous. In the comments below, let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. I would love to know your thoughts and I will chat with you soon. Bye guys. All right, with 15,000 subscribers just around the corner, this is your chance to win a $150 Amazon gift card. I, it's in Canadian because I am Canadian. And I hope that one of you will be able to buy all sorts of lovely books from your wish list with it. Now, in order to win, you need to first be subscribed to this channel like this video and also leave a comment in the comments below. After we hit 15,000 subscribers, I am going to uh, pick a random video, randomize the comments and pick a winner. So the more videos you watch, the more comments you leave, the more chances that you are going to have to win. Good luck to all of my bookish friends out there.